Hello and welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to listen to the progress I have made on the down tempo track we're working on this month, the one titled 060911. And when last we left off, we had uh, the original loop, which sounded a little bit like this. So the dilemma that I've been having with this is that while I really like this loop and I think it's very emotionally expressive and um, it's very full sounding, um, it's kind of almost too full. It's like I'm not really sure where to go with that. Um, and so I decided to take an approach that I call uh, exquisite corpse. Oh god, my cat's going to... Hi, facts. That was facts. Anyway, exquisite corpse um, refers to this game that the Surrealists used to play, where you write a line of poetry, uh, you write two lines of poetry, and then you fold the piece of paper down so that only the second line is visible, and then you hand it to someone else who writes two more lines of poetry that follow from that one line they can see and then they fold it down and they keep going and at the end you have a long poem written by several people that is uh, not necessarily cohesive from start to finish but that as you flow through it has a certain internal logic and it gives you these very interesting poems and so my thought with this process is essentially take out loops and play parts over it and um, when I listened to the whole I was just listening to it earlier in my car and I realized that there's that there's a spectrum here um, from a purely narrative sort of um, sound so and when I say narrative the way I use the word narrative um, it's in the sense of like storytelling through the music where you have chord progressions and um, melodies that interact with each other in a way that it feels like it's kind of trying to communicate something um, which I think this loop very much does and um, that's related to um, in Greek music theory ancient Greek music theory there were basically two deities of music. There was Apollo and Dionysus, and Apollo was the god of narrative, of lyrical poetry. Uh, his music was accompanying storytelling, and it was played on a harp. And uh, Dionysus, on the other hand, was the god of ecstatic music. And there's a lot of interesting theory behind all this, but um, basically that's the that is the pole, those are the poles in which my musical process uh, kind of flows between and uh, tries to integrate. And so we have this thing that is very Apollonian. It's very, um, you know, something from a story. <laughs> And we want to get to a point that's more ecstatic, that's something you would dance to, that um, sort of the, the, the verbiage leaves the mental space that you're in when you're listening to it. And so we, uh, what I did was I created a bunch of loops, and at some point I end up doubling the kick. Um, so instead of having that sort of broken beat, slow, um, halftime feel to it, uh, we get into a, a straight four on the floor um, kick. Now this is going very slow, it's only 81 beats per minute, uh, that's what my friend uh, Blue Spectral Monkey used to call slambient music uh, when it gets to that point. Um, slambient, well, it's best just to point it out because so I think you'll realize why it's called slambient. But um, so, but to make it all pivot, um, I played this uh, 
pattern on an electric piano sound, which I'll play for you right now. And what is uh, when I say it's a pivot, what I what I mean is it has much of the uh, emotional quality of the previous loop, um, and it fits it so that the chord changes that are going on with the other sounds fit with that keyboard loop. But at the same time, um, it doesn't. When you start to strip out the other elements, it create space for things to come in that are a little more repetitive and trancey that are staying in one key and then it drops out and it's like the whole harmonic uh, floor of the song has disappeared. So let me uh, try just doing a real quick version of the transition here. So um, I'm going to stop all the clips and start again with where we were at. So I'll take it from there and then you can listen to how it gets faster and more driving and more uh, the, the, the harmonies kind of drop out and just staying on that one note on the A minor. So that is uh, the basis of the the song. So we start with this melody, this very pretty kind of narrative part that's very slow. It pivots on the keyboard, the electric piano sound, and then parts start to drop away as new parts get added. And you can sort of see that in the arrangement view, the, the shape that this is making here. So. Uh, and then I end up just dropping out the beat for a while and sort of experimenting with some of the sound, um, you know, the more ambient sounds without any kind of beat, which sounds like this. So anyway, uh, that's the very brief introduction into what I've done with the piece, and I'm going to upload this to SoundCloud, and you can check it out there, and uh, as always, give me comments, give me feedback, uh, ideally on the SoundCloud uh, page, because you can actually click on a section and add your comment right there, so if you like you know, the sound at two, uh, two minutes into it, or you, you think I should throw in a, I don't know, a didgeridoo or a, a trombone, let's say, at 3.30, probably not a trombone, but maybe, who knows, um, then you can actually put your comment right there. So uh, that's it for the arrangement uh, section, at least the initial arrangement of both of these songs, and um, this coming week we're going to start working with overdubs, uh, working other musicians into the mix here, and laying down some new parts, and also tweaking the arrangement because uh, 
we're not at the final arrangement by any means, but we do have a, a rough outline of what the songs are going to sound like. So um, stay with me, keep coming back to the Facebook page and to uh, logosmusic.net slash Mobius. <laughs> 